Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Wanted to take spend a little time with you guys tonight uh, going over the geopolitical situation that we have uh, here or that we are having uh, overseas with China, uh, Iran, and even Russia, the situation that's happening there, and give you a little breakdown of the briefing that was at the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff meeting the other day. Uh, a lot of things were discussed, of course, Russia, Ukraine, uh, Russia, uh, and Iran, that growing um, ally strengthening that's taking place there. And of course, we know the president of Iran just met with President Vladimir Putin. I uh, didn't get any information regarding that because the meeting is very tight-lipped from what I was told on uh, that particular meeting there. But then China, China was a very big thing at the Pentagon briefing. In fact, they were showing video footage of some of the latest technology the Chinese are using, and it is alarming. I was told that if we were to go to war with China, it would be like trying to fight ourselves. That's how advanced the Chinese are now in numbers and in strength, and in technology, they may even have an edge over the United States. We're going to get into some of that, some of that so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Uh, China, though, as I said, though, their growing presence in the Middle East is really becoming an, uh, an alarming issue with uh, the United States and basically trying to push the United States out of the Middle East, not to mention uh, the Pacific. Uh, in fact, uh, before I go into that, it just brought to my mind as I'm thinking about this, I told you I would check in on the situation of why China has not taken down Taiwan already. As I mentioned to you before, uh, we were getting the intel that China was uh, planned and poised to take Taiwan between Christmas and New Year's. And then when I saw that that did not take place, I couldn't help but wonder what happened because these wars are generally scripted in which direction they're going to go. Well, I discovered that it wasn't that they didn't or that it got put on the back burner, but rather the situation with Iran wanting to attack Israel has really caused a quagmire for the Chinese. And they've been more uh, dealing with the Iranians and their desire to strike Israel early. And as it was told to me, get the war going. Uh, and so therefore, it kind of scuttled their attention more to uh, the Iran-Israel problem and, uh, and put on the back burner the issue with Taiwan. But Taiwan is, of course, clearly not off the agenda. And the, and the situation, though, with China and the Middle East, that was one of the big topics there. And I found this article here on January 19th, China pool grows in the Middle East. Uh, Geopolitics uh, stops for no country, whether the U.S. likes it or not. The Chinese footprint in the Middle East is growing due to decades of careful planning and quiet courtship. China is kicking off um, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi has just finished a trip uh, to East Africa on a charm offensive designed to shore up China's presence on the Red Sea coast and solidify Beijing's role in the Horn of Africa. At the same time, China is entrenching its positions as its critical player in the Middle East and threatening America's long-standing hegemony in the region. The Chinese are expanding their military assistance to more Middle Eastern nations at the time of heightened tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran. As the United States continues to reevaluate its arms sales to the regional allies, such as Saudi Arabia, China, is increasing its exports of military techno te technology and hardware. This historic shift is part of the profound geopolitical reformulation in the Middle East. Now, me bringing these things out to you guys, I think is really going to also help support the video I plan to try to put together tomorrow, going back into the Silk Road Initiative, the Antichrist uh, move, what's going to be happening between Egypt, Israel, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, Nimrod, how he plays a part in this, uh, how the resurrection of his body, uh, Ra, the sun god of Egypt, who's supposed to be coming back on the scene, I think, by the year 2026, and the disclosure of things that are going to be happening. So I think some of what you're going to see here will play into a better understanding and uh, of what's really going on here. But as we go on, another uh, news article here, Yahoo News, U.S. warns Middle East allies not to give China a military base. Well, I hate to tell you, China's already got a stronghold in the Middle East like never before. Uh, I was uh, finding out that China has 
troops in Saudi, excuse me, not Saudi Arabia, but, but in Syria, uh, in uh, Iraq, Iran, and they have already fought some 20 battles. They've also suffered some heavy casualties along the way as well. And I asked, were the Chinese doing more like what the U.S. does, and that is using Arabic military in order to fight its battles? And I was told, not actually. The Chinese more so send their own troops in to do their own battles and wage their own wars. But they are showing that they are a force to be reckoned with, and they, even though they have suffered big casualties, they have not lost a single battle, and they are bringing not only the Sunnis under uh, obedience in the Middle East, but they are also uh, letting some of these other factions know they are the new boss in town, while we are slowly but surely being pushed out of that theater. Of course, China also has Russia there uh, in the Middle East there, which Russia, as we have seen in other video footages over time there, uh, has been showing its strength and prowess over the U.S. military, kind of muscling our, our, our troops and stuff out of the way, uh, letting us know that they're there and they're there to stay. But the one thing that was very alarming, though, to me was when I was told about the Pentagon breaking down some of the latest technology the Chinese have and how that their technology is getting to a place that overshadows our technology, where it will make us far more, uh, it would make far more of, a, of an opponent in a war, more so even than Russia would be. We see this article right here in UPI. China warns U.S. of serious consequences after Navy ship warship crosses South China Sea. So China continues to bolster itself, not only in the Middle East, but also in the Pacific, and is beginning to assert itself. I was told that in this meeting here that they had discovered that the Chinese Navy is one of the most formidable navies in the world with technology that even surpasses our own technology. That is alarming in itself. One of the big things that I was told was the Chinese have really gone into the drone industry. In fact, Chinese soldiers carry what they call sidearm drones, a drone that just can sit on their side, much like if they were carrying the AK-47, and they're able to take that drone and pull it off their belt and sling it into the air, and it will search and destroy whatever target has been programmed to search and destroy. If it's a group of soldiers uh, over in a foxhole somewhere, it will go down into that foxhole and it'll either explode on uh, when it comes into there or it actually has, believe it or not, machine gun bullets that will spin around and shoot every single person there, kill every man on the site. But that's not all. I want to play just a little clip of this video here for you and then we're going to talk more about some of the information that was shared with me. Listen into this. These and others that could hide from enemy radar. These are some of the latest remotely operated military aircraft in China's arsenal. We've seen sort of an explosion of creativity from the Chinese defense industry. And Beijing has said modernization includes building more sophisticated drones at a time of tension between the U.S. and China. They want a military that can employ artificial intelligence, autonomous systems, and generally a lot more unmanned systems. China's military spending is lower than the U.S., but Beijing has been dedicating a growing portion of its budget to drones and other military equipment. And while Chinese drones don't have as much battlefield experience as the American-made ones, we compare different models to see how Beijing is pushing new designs and capabilities to better equip its military for possible conflicts in the region. Since the 1930s, the U.S. military has been one of the early pioneers of unmanned aerial vehicles. Today, it flies a fleet of thousands of drones that have operated in countries including Iraq, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Drones are going to become very important in modern combat. Timothy Heath has been studying China's military strategy for more than 20 years and is a senior researcher at RAND Corporation, a nonprofit organization that contributes strategic analysis to the U.S. Department of Defense. Drones offer options unavailable to manned aircraft since they can be remotely operated or autonomously follow pre-programmed paths. I'm going to move forward just there a little bit a into the video here. Seven, probably it is going to be used mainly in the region or the maritime space in the East China Sea and South China Sea. In that area, the Chinese don't need as long an endurance. That particular drone that the Chinese developed there, if you'll notice that kind of that attached wingspan, 
That was actually designed in order to be able to handle typhoon type of winds. What it does need is the ability to navigate unstable weather conditions in the region, like typhoons. So the WZ-7 is designed with two sets of overlapping wings that the Chinese military says create more airborne stability. Besides tweaking designs, China is also rethinking how many drones it can deploy at the same time. The Golden Eagle 150B can drop small bombs, and China has said it wants to use several of them simultaneously. It's kind of like a swarm of bees where they all, all each individual bee knows what it must do and can make its own decisions. If one bee next to it gets killed, the others will continue swarming to sting. China hasn't demonstrated these drones, but showed how the swarming tactic would work with the this particular drone here that you saw was kind of catapulted out of the truck. Uh, the Chinese also have its, their own aircraft carrier that does the exact same thing. It catapults the drone into the air. They're able to carry an enormous number of drones on a ship and they can slingshot it in, not having to worry about the G-forces it takes to be able to get that drone out. As another thing that was shared with me, there is actually somewhere in this video a particular picture, and I'll try to let it just play for a moment here as I'm talking with you, that I happened to capture uh, or catch when I was watching it, and, uh, and it seemed to be very similar to what I was telling you about, where the soldiers themselves can actually carry a drone on their side and just launch that drone up into the air. And uh, so maybe that will actually pop up here while we're talking about different things that are going on. Uh, one of the things, too, I was told that... Uh, um, China is, a step, of course, as I already told you, they were establishing a dominant role there in the Middle East. Uh, one thing they said is that uh, they've already waged dozens of wars over there, but the Chinese, they basically operate nearly emotionless. Uh, so they're very methodical. They think out things very deeply uh, before making any decisions to go, go at what they're going to do. Um, and one thing, too, let me just, uh, going back, uh, actually we're fixing to go to Iran next, but the situation, in fact, I'll just go ahead and go into Iran now. The situation with Iran is that Iran is pushing the timeline to get things going, just reading from my notes here. China is pushing back, saying they're not ready yet, and the Chinese work strategically and aren't um, emotional people thinking everything out. Uh, 2025 is the realistic target date for the increased uh uh, interactions in the Middle East is what I was actually told there and so this is what they're anticipating but as of right now Iran has got a very itchy trigger finger they're really wanting to get the war going uh, and and of course uh, the Chinese are not ready yet so I kind of pushed on that issue a little bit and I asked about um, the situation with Israel because I know from intel that I've gotten out of Israel Israel has been buying tankers up from another country. I believe it's one of the former Soviet states. They've also been converting around-the-clock LL jets that are, that are no longer being used in service or also to be tankers used in the war there. They've been training their pilots on the new jets that are coming in as tankers. And Israel is putting the pressure on the United States to go to war with Iran and not later, but now. Uh, but this is where it gets really crazy here I am discussing the situation with uh, regarding China, Iran, this attack on Israel, and then we get into the discussion of this being very eerily the way Germany was when Hitler was in power and how that Ger uh, Hitler's cabinet was made up of many elite Jews. Yeah, believe it or not, elite Jewish members were part of Hitler's cabinet, part of the hierarchy. And then I was told it was so strange how that they were willing to kill their own, send the Jewish people to the slaughter, and yet there were so many Jews that surrounded Hitler. That same analogy was applied to China and to this war that is being planned on Israel in 2025. And that what we would see is that China, very much like Hitler and Germany, their leadership is surrounded by elite Jewish people. 
but yet they're willing to forge an alliance with Iran as well as Russia and actually attack Israel, and they don't really seem to care who they kill. It was actually said to me that it was a little odd in the case of Russia too, because Russia knows that about two millions, two million of the citizens of Israel are actually Russian citizens. Why would they be willing to go against their own people? But that's part of a one world system and a one world government that's being set up with a one world religion at the helm. I'm going to go into that even deeper when we get a chance here. Let me look at some of the notes here. As I had already mentioned Taiwan, we already spoke about Taiwan and what happened there. Um, I was told, though, that to the war with Israel will be fought as a missile drone war. It won't be so much as an invasion, but a missile drone type of war. Uh, moving towards Ukraine uh, next here, Germany blocks NATO ally from transferring weapons to Ukraine. Now, says here Germany is, is blocking the North Atlantic Treaty Organization ally Estonia from giving military support to Ukraine by refusing to issue permits for German origin weapons to be exported to Kiev as it braces for a potential Russian invasion. Unlike the U.S., Britain, Poland, and other allies, the German government has declined to export lethal weapons directly to Ukraine. Now this is, I bring this up, and as I was told that most of our viewers are probably not find this very palatable, based on all the propaganda that's coming out about uh, Ukraine. But in reality, the situation in Ukraine, uh, and I'll just click on this video here in just one second here, is being trumped up on our end to make it look like Russia's the bad guy. Now, it is true that Russia has troops on the border with Ukraine and other parts of the uh, border with other uh, member states of the European Union. But as I was told, Russia has moved those troops there because of the threats they're facing from NATO members pushing for a war with Russia. If you listen to this little clip right here, that might kind of, it'll play into the propaganda that's being put out for the American consumer but the reality of it is, is that Russia is not so much the aggressor in this case, from what I was told. And this was very sad coming from an American sitting in our own government, but knows that we're being lied to and fed a bunch of propaganda. Let's listen in. Russia is continuing to escalate its threat toward Ukraine. We've seen that again in just the last few days with increasingly bellicose rhetoric building up its forces on Ukraine's borders, including now in Belarus. Russia's repeatedly turned away from agreements that have kept the peace across the continent for decades. And it continues to take aim at NATO. Russia says the problem is NATO. On its face, that's absurd. NATO didn't invade Georgia. NATO didn't invade Ukraine. Russia did. Ukraine is just trying to survive. No one should be surprised if Russia... It's kind of sad when I listen to that because I go back to when the war took place in Ukraine and I remember how that the Ukrainian military would take its own citizens because they were more loyal to Russia and make them eat glass. Yeah, literally eat glass. If you've ever seen the videos of the torture and the techniques that were done during the battles that were being fought against East and West Ukraine, of course, Russia did support Eastern Ukraine because they are predominantly ethnic Russians in the first place. But there's a lot more to the battle than meets the eye, and of course, neither side is any better than the other for that matter. But one thing that I have been told is that this is this aggression and everything that is taking place now is more at the hands of Biden and his son because of the lust and greed for money over the pipeline. This is what's caused all of this. Also, the, uh, the gentleman in this video here mentions Belarus, Russia building up its troops in Belarus. Well, Russia is conducting a military drill with Belarus uh, due to the fact that NATO could actually start a war with Russia that would bring in uh, the different surrounding nations there, whether it be Estonia or Latvia, any of the others there. So, yes, Russia is also practicing war games, getting ready for what may or may not come in the very near future. 
Moving over here to Iran, as I mentioned to you already, the Iranian president did take and fly into Moscow, the meeting that was th done there. Again, all the details of that meeting were kept pretty hush-hush as of right now, so we're not really sure. But one thing that does seem clear is that Iran is wanting to make sure that they have the backing of Russia, or at least that Russia will not intervene at the event that they were to start a campaign against Israel. Because after all, Russia does play ally to Israel as well as uh, that of Iran. But with the situation as it is, well, let me just put it this way. You don't have to worry about whether or not they're an ally to Iran or an ally to Israel because, again, the war is all scripted. Even though the Iranians are having the itchy trigger finger to go to war with, with Israel, you have to remember only the elite of the elite in, in Iran know that this is only a game. It's only a setup. But for the rest of the Iranians, it would be a real deal. So that's kind of where all that's at right there. And I uh, uh, don't need to play that particular video there. But that's some of the, uh, the, the important things that I wanted to be able to share with you that's going on. Uh, we are going to be seeing two, by the way, uh, I'll probably go a little bit more into this over on Patreon the end of, uh, of the year. There's going to be some phenomenal electric storms that are going to be taking place. Uh, it is believed to be caused from the static uh, electricity from asteroids as well as uh, from some very unusual activity that the sun will be producing that will cause some uh, incredible lightning storms, damaging lightning storms on the Earth. Uh, as well as even ball lightning. Uh, so I'll be talking about that a little bit more. That and some other issues over there on our Patreon channel. Uh, I'll be working all this weekend trying to share more things with you and, uh, and, and also going into a little bit of devotional uh, type videos as well. Really feel strongly that especially the hour we're living in right now, we need to spend more time talking about uh, Jesus and the, the gospel of Jesus Christ because of the hour being so late. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Good evening.